Hi and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today's project is going to be a gift card holder with a pop-up insert. Here's a quick look at the outside. I'm going to save the inside for when we get over to the stamp table so you can get a better look and appreciate the contents. This gift card holder is so easy you'll be able to make a bunch of them in no time. I don't know about your gift list, but it seems like I'm giving more and more gift cards lately, and this is a sure great way to dress them up. If you're here visiting from YouTube, you'll find a link in the description of this video below, which will navigate you over to the pictures, cutting dimensions, and supplies for today's project. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started. Here's a close-up look of the gift card holder on the outside. Yes, lots of bling, those beautiful red rhinestones. And I've used a little ribbon here to close it. And I'm going to show you the inside, but I'm also going to give you a disclaimer. I have used an old stamp set for the greeting. That was a big oops. I didn't realize it was still in my stamp studio. But I'm going to change that up to use the same greeting that was from this beautiful Winter Woods stamp set. This is really simple. Let me show you how to put it together. I've cut a piece of Whisper White cardstock. This is four and a quarter by 11. Remember, if you're looking for the cutting dimensions, you don't have to write them down while I'm demonstrating. They're gonna be in the link that's provided for you below if you're here from YouTube. Just click on it and it'll navigate you right over to all that information. We're gonna do some scoring and we are gonna score at four and a half. So I'm gonna line up my paper here and my Stampin' Trimmer. There is a light blade that comes with the trimmer for scoring. There is also a dark blade that comes with it for cutting. And you can navigate them out of the way, which is really a wonderful thing. So with my paper lined up at four and a half and I'm going to score. I'm gonna slide it over to five and a half and I'm gonna score again. And I need the next one at six and a half. And this is the beauty of the Stampin' Trimmer is that it will extend past 14 and a half inches. And there's a little leg here on the back that will open up that provides great stability for this. You don't have to worry about it sagging. The six and a half inches is right here within the bend. I know it might be difficult to see in the video, but in person it's very clearly marked. So I'm gonna slide over to there and I'm gonna provide one more score line. So we have three score lines here. I'm gonna be using my bone folder to help crispen up those creases. The score line that's in the center, I want you to fold it up. That's what we call a mountain fold. And then the other two are gonna go down. So I'm gonna fold that down and this down. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna align my ends the very best that I can. You know, regardless of how careful I am with scoring, sometimes I'm just a smidgen off and we'll be able to adjust that here. And then I'm gonna use that bone folder for that nice crisp crease here on the end. So on the inside, you're gonna have what looks kind of like an upside down W. So do you see it here? This is actually where the gift card is going to come out. I'm gonna do my stamping next. I've chosen to use the Buffalo Check background stamps. I like my background stamps wood mount because they're so large, I don't lift them off the table. I'm gonna give you a tip on how I use mine. I'm gonna leave it face up and I'm gonna use my black memento ink and I'm gonna cover the image with ink. This is a very large stamp. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your stamp pad is well inked, otherwise you're gonna have areas that are not gonna be solid. And I'm gonna take my time, I'm gonna make sure that I cover it well. I'm gonna move that all the way over to my side of the grid paper here. And this is the front of our card and I'm gonna turn it face down and I'm gonna lay it right on top. I'm taking my grid paper and I'm folding it over the top and I'm rubbing. So what's happening is the image is actually transferring from the bottom up, which really helps me. I have arthritis in my hands. In addition to that, that stamp is so large, I find that I can never get the image straight. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just rub generously. Once you're done, go ahead and open it up and you'll be able to just to lift your image and there you will have your Buffalo Check background. This can be cleaned on your Stampin' Chamois or on your Stampin' Scrub. I'm also gonna use the Winter Woods stamp set. And I'm focusing on this tree today and I've cut myself a piece of Whisper White cardstock. Now I'm gonna be using the Old Olive ink pad. I'm gonna open that up and I have mounted the tree here. You're gonna see too that the tree is relative in size to the ink pad. So here's a tip for you. I turn it face up. I hold the ink pad by the sides and I ink it this way. I'm assured then that I'm not gonna miss an area with ink. And then I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna stamp it right here in the center of that Whisper White cardstock. Lots of firm, even pressure. This is a very large solid stamp. You wanna make sure you get all those little details out. 
I want to call your attention to this area here. You may think that that is a flaw in the stamp, and it's not. It's part of the artist's rendering. It's actually to be reminiscent of the snow weight. This is going to get layered on a piece of real red cardstock. So I'm going to flip that over, and I'm going to use my adhesive in those four corners. I'm going to mount that here, leaving a small border all the way around. This piece is going to be for the inside greeting. I'm going to use the real red ink for this one just to create some color coordination. And from that same stamp set, I've pulled out the greeting thinking of you this season. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll ink that up. And I'm going to stamp that here near the top. That'll leave me a little bit of room to sign my card and maybe put a personal message. I want to add a little bit of character to this. So I'm going to bring in my old olive ink pad one more time. And I've mounted that single pine ball from that exact same stamp set. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink that up. And because it's small, I always like to check to make sure I don't have ink around my edges. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stamp a couple of those here. And without re-inking, I'm going to just stamp a couple shadows next to it. I cut a piece of old olive cardstock to mount that on. So I'm going to flip this over and add adhesive into my four corners again. I created this layer to be very narrow. So it's only going to have, oh, about an eighth of an inch all the way around. So I'm just kind of looking to make it as even as possible. This is going to get mounted here to the inside of our card base. So I'll go ahead and add more adhesive to this. And that's going to go here on this side of our card base. Let's create that opening now that we're going to need for our gift card. I'm going to hold this area together. I'm going to fold these areas back. I'm going to be using the classic label punch to help make that opening. I want you to keep in mind that you can use other punches as long as you can repeat the punch and make the opening wide enough or you can use a portion of a die. So I'm going to turn this face up to make it easy for my hand. I'm going to start in the center of this paper. So I'm just looking to go about halfway with the punch. I'm also looking to see if there's equal amount of space on both sides, just visually. And then I'm going to squeeze and punch out that piece. Now I'm going to slide over and I want to make sure that this edge of my cardstock is still slightly visible. I don't want to go too far. And I'm going to do my very best to line this up and then punch again. I have yet to make this totally perfect. So I'll show you some tricks on how to make this even in just a minute. I'm going to slide over now to the other side and do the exact same thing. So I'm lining up this edge of the paper here, looking to make it as straight as possible as I can here across the top, and I'm going to punch. Now you can see that it's slightly uneven. You see how there's a little notch here? So I'm going to come back in and I'm going to attempt to try to make that a little bit more straight and punch out that extra. That's a little bit better. If you have an area that really bothers you, you can do a couple things. Take your bone folder and just gently file it down. It'll make it a lot less noticeable. Or you can come in with your scissors and give it a little bit of a trim. So now we have our opening. We're going to need to attach this so that this will hold our gift card. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to put a piece of tear and tape here at the very bottom. You want to make sure that you don't impede into this area too far, otherwise the gift card won't be held down inside. So I'm going to place my tear and tape here all the way near the bottom, place my fingernail there, and then rip. Burnish that paper down inside. What's going to happen now is you're going to be able to use your pickup tool, and I've got my paper piercing tool on this end, and that's going to help me lift off that paper backing. I keep my fingernails short, so that's a little challenging for me to get off without it. Before I go ahead and seal it, this is just a Lisa thing. I like to go ahead and put my gift card in here. And I like to open this up and I like to make sure that I'm not going to get down into the sticky area, but I've got a little bit of that card coming down so it'll hold it. And once I'm happy with the placement, I'll go ahead and seal it. I find that if I don't do that first, that I find this little area difficult to open up to get my gift card in and out. So you can see now the gift card's going to come in and out very easily because we've kind of conditioned that paper by putting it in there first. And of course, plenty of room for you to write an additional message if you'd like. Let's go ahead and finish the front. We've got our Christmas tree and I'm going to flip that over. I'm going to use Stampin' Dimensionals for the back. These are pre-cut double-sided pieces of foam tape and that's going to allow me to make this balance right inside the center of that panel. I'm leaving this area open so I can run some ribbon through there. So I'm just going to get these paper backings removed, get that ready, and I'm going to set that aside. 
This is the beautiful mixed satin ribbon. I don't know if you can tell in the video or not, but the top half of this ribbon has like a crosshatch stitch in it, and the bottom half is solid. It's really unusual, and it's quite beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this up. I'm going to wrap the ribbon around the front. I'm going to even up my ends the very best that I can, and then I'm going to lay that down here. Here's our panel, and this is going to go over the front and I'll tack that in place. This is gonna be used to close it, so we'll go ahead and we'll tie it. I did a single loop bow, and if you've not seen one of my videos before, I'll show you how to do that. It's very much like making a regular bow, and the reason I like it is it's a bit more masculine. So start like you're gonna make a regular bow, and when you come around and you come through, you know how you would normally stop here to tie your second loop. Go ahead and pull it all the way through, and then pull tightly you're gonna have that single loop here at the top. And we've got plenty of ribbon left over, so we're gonna come in here, give that just a little bit of a haircut to finish up those ends, and let's go ahead and decorate that tree. Christmas is all about the bling, and these red rhinestones are absolutely beautiful, and that's gonna lend some credence to our ribbon and that beautiful layer behind our tree. So I'm gonna use my paper piercing tool to help me pick them up because they are rather small. They do have glue dots already on the back, which makes them really easy to use. I'm gonna start by putting one here at the top, and then I'm gonna lay the others randomly throughout the tree. And then I'm gonna go ahead and push those in place to make sure that they're good and secure. But we're all finished. Isn't that beautiful and really simple? You can use designer paper here instead of the background stamp. Think of the different images that you can use as well as different greetings. Here's the one that we created today. Here is the one that I created before you join me. You can find these products in the Stampin' Up! Holiday Catalog, which is here. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! Demonstrator and you are interested in purchasing Stampin' Up! Supplies, I would be more than happy to send you a complimentary copy. We also have the annual catalog, so I can send you one or both. Just leave me a comment below. Remember to head over to that link down in the description of this video below to get the pictures, cutting dimensions, and a complete list of the supplies that I've used here for this pop-up gift card. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.